Hi everyone, this is Maverick Poa, the chemistry guru. Now a few weeks back, I received a WhatsApp message from one of my students requesting me to clarify one of her questions. And interestingly, I actually received three different messages from three different students from the same JC on the same question. So I think this question is pretty interesting and there are quite a few things that we want to talk about involving this question. So we want to spend a bit of time to talk about this question on strong oxidation of alkenes. All right, the question is here and it goes something like this. I have a hydrocarbon C which contains multiple C double bond C bonds and was reacted with hot acidified potassium manganate 7 solution. The fragments obtained are as follows. So we have three of these fragments from the product of strong oxidation of alkene. So we want to suggest the structure of the hydrocarbon C and two marks are awarded for this question. Now, before we begin the discussion, I think it is good to clarify that actually this question is not that straightforward because there are more than one possible answer. So usually we do not see such questions for A-level exams because we don't want ambiguous answers or multiple answers to the same question. So in my opinion, in exam condition, we will not see such questions. But for the sake of discussion in terms of chemistry concepts, of course, we will want to discuss this. Now, the first thing we have to understand, of course, is what is the reaction that we are looking at? What we are looking at, it is the strong oxidation of alkene because we have the C double bond, C bonds. And we know that this is a strong oxidation because we are using hot acidified KMnO4. So let us recap involving the products of oxidation, involving the strong oxidation of alkene. Now the discussion is here. If I have a C double bond C and it is subjected to hot acidified KMnO4, what will happen is strong oxidation will occur or the C double bond C bond would cleave. And what products are being formed, it is actually dependent on the groups that are attached to the alkene carbon. Now I actually had a previous video involving the strong oxidation of alkenes. So if you're interested to know the reaction in detail and some examples of simpler questions, do take a look at that video. Now, as mentioned, depending on the fragments that are attached to the alkene carbon, then the fragment will be oxidized to different compounds. So the outcome actually it is summarized here. Now we have three possible scenarios, right? The first scenario is if the alkene carbon is attached to two R groups, then it will be oxidized to a ketone. And how do we visualize it being oxidized to a ketone? Actually, it is very simple. What I do is if there's a C double bond to something, I just stopper this with oxygen. Then in terms of conversion, we know that it will be oxidized to ketone functional group. So I just use K to represent the ketone. Then the second instance, if I have a carbon which is bonded to an RH group, then in terms of the functional group that it would be oxidized to, is it will be oxidized to a carboxylic acid group. And again, in terms of how to visualize this, it is very simple. If there's a double bond, I will just stopper this with oxygen. And if there's a hydrogen attached to the carbon, I will squeeze in an oxygen between the carbon and hydrogen. So you'll be converted to carboxylic acid. I'll just use A to represent the acid for short. Now the third scenario is if the carbon is attached to two hydrogen groups, and in terms of products, you'll be oxidized to carbon dioxide and water. So usually I'll just write this as a C for CO2 and water. So we will be using this concept to answer this question. And since they give us the products that are being formed, so we need to systematically determine for each of the functional group inside this product. And I work backwards, what is the type of alkene that will give me this particular functional group. So now we have the products being drawn here. And what we want to do next is we want to focus on the carbon that is bonded to a double bond O because you notice in terms of what we have deduced, whether it is a ketone or acid, the product actually has a C double bond O group. So in terms of the product, what I'll do first is I'll look out for a functional group which contains the C double bond O group, which is this guy here, which I've highlighted in blue, this carbon here, this carbon, this carbon, as well as this carbon. So all together, we will have five carbons to consider. Then the next thing is I look at the functional group and I try to deduce what is the type of alkene that will give me that particular functional group. So the first functional group that we have for this carbon here is actually an acid. 
So I can write this down, A for acid. The second guy, this is a ketone. So I write this K for ketone. This functional group, it is a ketone. The next one, it is an acid. The last guy, it is also an acid. So if I've written down the functional groups, then what I can do next is I can use this guideline and I try to figure out what is the alkene that can be oxidized to give me the particular functional group. Now I know that a ketone comes from a carbon bonded to the 2R group. And how do we do that is, I can actually simply look at the product and I remove the oxygen. Because in terms of oxidation, this forward direction is I'm inserting an oxygen. So if I work backwards, I just need to remove the oxygen, then I can figure out what the alkene looks like. And similarly for acid, how do I convert this functional group where the carbon is attached to an R and a H is I put the oxygen at the double bond and I insert the oxygen between the carbon and hydrogen to form acid functional group. So when I work backwards, same thing, I just need to remove the oxygen and I can figure out what the alkene looks like. So actually this is very simple. So what I can do is I can just focus on the oxygen and I imagine that I take away this oxygen, I take away this oxygen, I take away all these oxygens that I've highlighted, then I can figure out the alkene that can form that particular functional group. So if I look at each of these guys, now this carbon, it is an acid. So in terms of the alkene that forms this acid, it comes from an RH group. So if I work backwards, this carbon here, it will be a double bond because I take away this oxygen, then this becomes a CH. And this carbon is attached to this carbon. So now I'm going to add this carbon here. And again, there's a double bond O, I just remove the oxygen and this carbon is attached to a CH3. So I will have this fragment. So this is the fragment on oxidation that will give me this product. So moving on, this guy, which is a ketone, I remove the oxygen. So in terms of the fragment that can be oxidized to give me this particular ketone, it will look something like this. But let me not draw the benzene ring. I just put it as a pH for short. So a pH will represent a phenyl group, which is effectively my benzene. So this is bonded to a carbon, double bonded to something else. Then this carbon is attached to a methyl group. So my CH3 will be here. So this is the fragment on oxidation that will give me this particular product. Then the next one is, this is an acid. So it comes from an RH group. Then again, what I do is I draw out this carbon. I form the double bond, but take away the oxygen. This bond, I remove the oxygen, then it will become a CH bond. Then this carbon is bonded to a CH2. So the CH2 is here. Then this CH2 is bonded to this acid carbon, which is now a double bond to a hydrogen because it is symmetrical. So these two carbons effectively will look very similar. So now what we have successfully done is I've considered what are the fragments or part of the alkene that on oxidation will give us these particular products. So now we are at this stage here. But it gets a little bit interesting because we have quite a few fragments. So maybe if I number this fragment number one, this is fragment number two, this is fragment number three. And the next thing we notice is in terms of the sequence, because if I have one, two, three, then what should be the correct sequence? Is it one bonded to two bonded to three or what is the arrangement? Now, fragment number one, because I have two alkenes, so most likely it will be in the middle of the chain. It cannot be on the first position or the last position because I have two alkenes. So it must be attached to two different other alkenes on the left-hand side as well as on the right-hand side. Then position two, because there's only one double bond. So fragment number two, most likely it will be a terminal position. So I can put it at position number one. Then fragment number three, again, because I have two double bonds. So what this means is fragment number three, again, it will be in the middle of the chain, it cannot be on the terminal position. So based on the discussion, we would have two possible arrangements. So which is listed here, the first fragment should be fragment number two, because there's only one alkene. So it should be on the extreme end or the terminal end. So I write this as the first position, followed by either fragment number one, then fragment number three. So that means it will be something like this, two attached to number one, attached to number three. But we run into a little bit of a problem, right? Because if 
number three is the last piece. Then you notice there's another double bond which needs to be bonded to something. So we have a missing piece that we need to worry about. Now another possibility is fragment number two joined to fragment number three joined to fragment number one two joined to three joined to one. Again, if this is the arrangement, we run into the same problem because fragment number one, there are two alkenes. So there's something missing that we have to account for, which is not given inside this question. So you notice we have this missing piece that students find this puzzling. So what could this missing piece be? Now, actually, if we consider the strong oxidation of alkenes, we have three possible outcomes depending on the groups that are attached to our alkene carbon, right? So I have carbon bonded to RR group, carbon bonded to RH group, and carbon bonded to HH group. Now that's the third consideration. If the carbon is attached to two hydrogen, we know that it will be oxidized to CO2 and water. And CO2, because it is a gas, obviously, so it will not be considered as an organic compound fragment. So it wouldn't be part of the products. Now sometimes question will tell us whether CO2 is evolved or not. Sometimes the question wouldn't tell us that. So if the question tells me that I have an alkene or an oxidation, these are the organic products that are being formed. So we have to be mindful. Maybe there's a possibility of forming carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide because it is not an organic product, then they are not obliged to tell us that CO2 is being formed. So there's a possibility that you have this fragment in this alkene. Now back to this question, this must be the most logical deduction for this question. I have a missing piece. So this missing piece must be a CH2 because on oxidation, it becomes CO2 and water and the CO2 will disappear. So I don't isolate it as a fragment. Another possibility is, of course, the question is flawed or the question is wrong. But of course, assuming that it is the correct question or there's nothing wrong with this question, then the only logical outcome or the only logical explanation is I have a missing fragment, which is a CH2. All right, so we are close to solving this mystery. So therefore, I know that instead of three fragments, actually I have four. Fragment number one, fragment number two, fragment number three, and a missing piece, CH2. So finally, we found this guy. So now I have two possibilities, right? Either fragment number two, joined to one, joined to three, joined to a CH2, or two, three, one, bonded to a CH2. But unfortunately, it is not that simple. Why is it the case is because fragment number one, it is not symmetrical. Now fragment number one, because it is not symmetrical, depending on how you flip the fragment number one, actually I can have two possibilities. So the discussion is here. In this case, if this is fragment number one, let's try to name this so it is easier to reference. The carbon that is bonded to the hydrogen, I call it position A or carbon A. The carbon that is bonded to the metal group, I call it position B. So if I write down position A followed by position B, then if it is bonded to X on the left-hand side and Y to the right-hand side, this is one possible structure. Now, if I switch the position of A and B, now X is still on the left-hand side, Y is still on the right-hand side, but now A is on the right and B is on the left, then you notice these two guys are different, right? Because in the case on the left-hand side, X is closer to the hydrogen. In the case of the structure on the right-hand side, X is closer to the metal carbon. So these two guys are different. That means in terms of arrangement for fragment number one, I have to consider fragment number one in terms of whether it is position AB or position BA. I have to consider these two possibilities. So in total, I will have four possible structures. So this will be the outcome. These two will be 2, 1, 3 bonded to a CH2, but one position is A on the left hand side, B on the right hand side. The other position it is a flip, B on the left hand side, A on the right hand side. Then the next two possibilities is position 2, 3, 1 bonded to a CH2, but same thing, I still have to consider the flipping of fragment number one, AB or BA. So all together, we have four possible structures. Of course, having said that, to answer this question, do I need to draw all the four possible structures? The answer is no. I just need to draw one of these answers. So maybe it is possible that when we do this question, we never really think of all these possibilities. We just need to find the missing piece. If you can figure out the missing piece, it is a CH2. In principle, you can answer this question. So it is not that bad. But as mentioned, 
you can have more than one possible answer. So usually this type of question we don't see in A-level exams because we don't like to have ambiguous answers. We want to have one specific answer for one specific question. All right, so finally we have sorted things out. So what we just need to do is we need to piece everything together and we draw out the four possible alkenes. So the first guy, if I draw two followed by one, followed by three, followed by CH2, and in terms of arrangement, we write it as AB position, then the hydrocarbon will look something like this. Fragment number two is this guy here. So I put in the pH, the carbon, and the CH3. So as referencing, this is the blue carbon of fragment number two. Then after that, you'll be double bonded to fragment number one. Now fragment number one, if it is AB, I just follow this. A is on the left-hand side, the yellow color carbon. B is on the right-hand side, the pink color carbon. So I just copy this wholesale. This will be a C, H, then C, CH3, then followed by a double bond. So again, we try to color code this so that it is easier to reference the yellow color followed by the pink color carbon. So we're done with number one, then followed by number three. Number three, it is symmetrical. So whether it is flip or not, it doesn't matter, right? So in this case, fragment number three will be carbon and hydrogen, CH2, CH, and a double bond. So this will be our fragment number three. Both carbons are green in color because they are symmetrical, followed by a CH2. So I'll end this off with a CH2. So this is one possible arrangement or one possible answer for hydrocarbon C. Now the second possibility is actually exactly the same as this, but what we need to do is I need to flip the position of A and B. So I swap the yellow color carbon and the pink color carbon, the position, I just switch it around. So I, what I can do is I can just use this guy and I copy this thing wholesale. I just need to flip AB to BA. So this will be a pH carbon. Then this is a CH3. So this guy, remember, I need to flip it around. So the pink carbon will come to the left-hand side. The CH3 will be here. The yellow carbon will be here. So now the pink color carbon is here. Yellow carbon is here. Then the rest of it is exactly the same, right? So I copy this thing wholesale from left to right. So I just copy this thing, double bond CH. This is a CH2. This is a CH, double bond CH2. So we are done with this guy as well. So this is the second possibility for hydrocarbon C. All right, the next two possibilities, fragment number two followed by three, followed by one, followed by CH2. So same thing, fragment number two, I can just write this out, pH bonded to a carbon, bonded to a CH3. So this is the blue carbon, followed by position three. Now fragment number three, it is this guy here. So I just copy this thing. This is a CH, CH2, CH. So these two are my green carbons. So position two, position three is done. Next, followed by position one or fragment number one. Fragment number one, I follow A, B arrangement. So I just copy this thing wholesale first. So this will be a C, H, C, C, H, three, bonded to the last piece, C, H, two. So this is my A, B. Yellow followed by pink. So this will be the third possibility for hydrocarbon C. Then the last guy, what we do is we just switch the position of AB to BA, then I can get the answer. So the rest of it, I can just copy this thing down. CH3, double bond, CH. This is a CH2, bonded to a CH. This is the one where I need to switch the position, right? Because it is not symmetrical. So the CH3 will be on the left-hand side now, followed by a CH. On the right-hand side, bonded to a CH2. So we're done. So let me just color code this again. This is the blue color bond, then, the other two is the green. Then the pink color will now be on the left-hand side. The yellow color carbon will be on the right-hand side. So this is the fourth and final possibility for hydrocarbon C. All right, so that was a pretty big discussion involving a question which is only worth two marks. But by and large, what we need to know is, again, we need to be familiar with the concept of strong oxidation of alkenes. We must know what are the fragments that are being formed. So for this question, what we do is we work backwards and try to figure out what are the fragments 
that can be oxidized to form the products. And we also want to keep in mind, sometimes the question will not tell me that CO2 is being evolved. So if there's a missing fragment, what we naturally think of is the possibility of this fragment where the carbon is bonded to two hydrogen. So if you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.